My friends, of all the things that we're watching around the world, we're watching, of course, the turbulence inside of America, uh, North Korea. That's something that we're watching very carefully. This is a situation that truly, truly, maybe above all, needs to have some attention focused on it, that we who are watchers of the world, well, I have always watched Israel yeah, because it is the God's prophetic timepiece and the apple of his eye. But Israeli planes outside of Syrian airspace fired two missiles to the southwest of Damascus International Airport early Friday. Al Mayadeen, a television channel associated with the Syrian government, reported this, that Syrian officials had said this earlier, excuse me. Earlier in the morning, there were reports on social media that explosions had been heard. Now, some posited that the explosions were the result of Israeli fire at a weapons depot nearby the airport. According to unverified reports, Syria's aerial defense responded to Israeli aircraft in the area. Hezbollah has not yet commented on the alleged incident. Now, back on Tuesday, earlier this week, the Israel Defense Forces shot down an Iranian-made drone operated by Hezbollah after the drone entered the demilitarized zone along the border between Israel and Syria on the Golan Heights. The Israeli Air Force's Aerial Defense Command fired a Patriot missile and destroyed the drone. And two weeks ago, foreign media reports claimed that Israeli warplanes struck a chemical arms plant in Syria from Lebanese airspace. The Syrian Army's General Command confirmed in a statement that the attack on what they called a, a military facility, uh, that's what they said it was, again, I'm somewhat translating here, and said that two people were killed and extensive damage was caused. Okay, so you, you've had uh, Israel and Syria have been going back and forth here. And Russia is, of course, a supporter of the Syrian government. Um, Iran and Russia, Syria, they're, they, they, let's just say they have, uh, is, is business dealings. Okay, we'll say that. <laughs> There's Igor again. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39 of the Bible speaks of the Gog Magog war. Now, Christians will argue back and forth about when this war takes place. No, no, it's after the tribulation. No, no, it's before the tribulation. No, 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 no. The Holy Spirit told me it's happening next Tuesday at 4.30 or whatever, whatever the case may be. Okay, folks, and I, am, I consider myself a firm follower of Christ who slips and falls all the time, but he helps me back up. It looks like we have the makings of potentially the Gog-Magog war here. Not that we haven't seen this before, these, these types of scenarios, because Russia, don't forget Russia, Russia and a, and a band of nations uh, from the Middle East move on Israel in that prophecy by Ezekiel. They move after e Israel. They, they move with the intent of destroying Israel together. But God intervenes and basically destroys all of those forces. It looks like this potentially because Russia is, a de is defending Syria. And you have Iran out there too, which is one of those nations, Persia, that would take part. Syria would take part in this. Could this be? Could this be leading up to the Gog-Magog war? Um, it's something to consider, something to keep an eye on, something that will truly have an effect on everyone in the world. <laughs> um, it could happen before the tribulation, it could happen during. I'm almost thinking it's either before or early in. That's my opinion. But I'll leave you a link to this, folks. Keep an eye on this, okay? Um, very important stuff. And as always, folks, I, I'll, I'll ask you, of course, to check out my fiction book, Fortress, A Wayfarer Story. I'll ask you to check out the free read. Both those things are linked. The free read of chapter one. Both of those things are linked down in, in my uh, description area below the video. But when you see this, know that we are seeing the signs. We are seeing the signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and, and the travails of the earth. You're seeing the signs of Christ's return. Now, the world is not going to end tomorrow, on Saturday the 23rd. But the world is going to change. It's changing right now. Be aware.
And as always, to not be given over to the spirit of fear, but instead of the power of love and of a sound mind that comes through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you folks, and I'll see you soon.